Okay, welcome to another edition of Real Estate Investor Talk. Sitting with me is uh, Candace Schultz. Candace is a property investor, she's a deal maker, but on top of that, she's also a lawyer. And uh, Candace has achieved some phenomenal things in real estate that she's about to share with us uh, in her career, both in the legal career and also in the property investing career. And once again, we'd like to dig deep and find out a little bit where the successes are and where we can learn from. So Candice, maybe you can start sharing with us where it all started for you in property and real estate. Sure, sure. Hi, Neil. Thanks, um, thanks for this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've just developed an absolute passion for property because being a professional, um, you're very limited to um, your outlook and you build for time and so forth. And uh, from you know my mid-twenties, I started investing in property and building up my portfolio just in terms of aggregating some of the, the, the bonuses and, and so forth that I've been making on deals. And um, I just realized that property is the way to go from a growth perspective um, you know, provided that um, the, you know you have the right financial model in place and the yields are good, um, you know the returns are great, and and, and over the long term, it's um, it's a secure investment. So where did it all start? What was the first deal that you made that made you buy a whole bunch of properties? You know? What what sort of got you going? What was the thing that sort of kickstarted you that said property is the is the way for me? Well, I got involved with one of my clients. Um, I was a trustee on the Mohashwa Family Trust, and we got involved in a very exciting project, um, developing a retail facility in Alexandra at the, called the Pan Africa Shopping Center. And um, it really has become a, a flagship development in Alexandra. And um, for me, just the excitement of putting the deal together, of getting the retailers on board, and then seeing the end product and um, still to this day, seeing the masses of people walking in and out and really bringing first class um, um, facilities into that area was just um, really a, um, an inspiring project to get involved in and sparked off my passion for, for property development and property projects. Great, so just elaborate a little bit on that Pan-African development. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to see that development. Yes. So just tell us a little bit more about the intrinsics, uh, how it started and, and what you actually did there. Because it, uh, as I understand it, there was kind of like a whole community already there which was built from that sort of basis. Yes, so what we identified was to actually establish a retail node um, at um, a transportation um, facility would, would grant you automatic access in terms of foot traffic and, and so forth. So that's essentially how um, what inspired the project was giving convenience to the community. So generally, you know, when you're coming home from when the when the community is coming home or they're leaving to go um, to their workplace, there's a there's a retail facility for them at their convenience and they don't actually have to go out of the way Know, going all the way into Santon or any of the adjacent adjacent recent retail facilities and it really has become a co community center meeting point for the for the community and um, as part of the project it was really um, important for us to understand what the community wanted and there was a lot of community facilitation that took place consultations with the taxi operators and other um, associations in the area to make sure that we really addressed all of the demands that the, that the community needed from a retail perspective, from a social perspective, and at the same time taking their transportation requirements into account. Well certainly from a first transaction, uh, a commercial transaction, it's a great start. So now yes. you're at the property bank, yes. where always the next move? Well, you know, all <laughs> that time I was then building up my own personal portfolio on the side and it was really the capital growth or appreciation in my personal portfolio that then um, gave me the financial freedom to break free from the hourly base billing um, and, and start getting involved in deals. And, um, and it just gave me a good foundation to start pursuing my passion in terms of putting deals together in the property space as well and being more creative in terms of the way that, um, that I approach property transactions. And, um, so now, one of my latest passions is really looking at 
creating opportunities for property investors on an offshore basis, looking at hedging against the RAND. Um, I mean, as South Africans, we're all very passionate about living in South Africa, and if we want to continue living and having a good life, it's important to make sure that we're sustaining our wealth on a global level, and the way to do that essentially is through hedging, um, hedging a RAND investment. Um, and um, with property, of course, it's, it's a solid, stable investment. It's something that brings or gives you a feeling of safety. And so that's what I wanted to bring to investors, an opportunity to participate in those transactions on an offshore base. And um, I then had a dream of living overseas, and I rented the place out, and uh, then decided, no, 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 maybe I should stay here and go on to qualify as being a lawyer. But I'd rented my place out, so I had nowhere to stay. So I had to go and buy another place. And at that point, I then realized, gosh, I'm officially in the property market. Um, and yeah, I just enjoyed the whole process of, um, of um, finding a good opportunity, of working together with a financial guy, putting a financial model together, working out the different yields, studying the different areas, um, and um, looking where the best opportunities are from a capital appreciation perspective and from a, um, from a rental return perspective. And yeah, I just slowly started building my, my property uh, portfolio up by just, um, by just acquiring um, apartments yeah, and renting them out. Yeah, I mean, there've been, um, there've been a lot of people a lot, uh, along the way that have guided me. Um, I've stayed very close with, um, uh, with an accountant who has actually guided me in terms of developing the financial model. So I think that's very important. But in terms of um, inspiration, I mean, I've always looked to um, to the Trumps in terms of um, you know the amount of wealth that they've built through property. So that's been my absolute um, inspiration. But if you take it on a local basis, um, if you take companies like Calgro, you know, they started um, with um, from, from uh, they started on such a small base and have grown into a massive listed company um, and even a company. Um, like Lynn Estates, I mean, she started off as an estate agent and now is a full-blown property developer, really just through focusing and um, and, and, and being excellent um, at every step of the way. And I think that's, that's really important, is just make sure that whatever you do, do it thoroughly and take each investment um, as, as a business. Um, you should evaluate it as a business, each property investment. There should be um, there should be a return, and um, and you should manage it um, just as stringently as you would a business. Through that process, I developed um, sound relationships with uh, property investors and property developers and so forth who really understand the market well. So I. Um, I think it's really important to align yourself with partners who are experts in that local market. I think it would be very naive to think that you could just move to a foreign jurisdiction and, 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 um, and start something off the bat on your own. So I've aligned myself with who I believe are the um, experts in the market and, um, the, um, and, and um, personally have made some investments and because of the outstanding return that I have had in terms of um, my investments, I've um, decided to actually package it and make it available to South Africans um, and yeah, give other people an opportunity to benefit from the relationships that I've built up. So I think it's really important to, um, to be guided by an investment strategy. And the investment strategy should start off with the type of investment that you want to make and the location. And when I say location, that should actually be guided on a macroeconomic perspective as well. So you need to consider, do you want to invest in South Africa with the current market conditions or do you want to invest um, on an offshore basis? Once you've established that, once again, zone in on the location. Make sure that you absolutely understand um, the location. Um, you're investing in a location where um, there is still potential growth. Um, you're not investing in a, in a stagnant market, whether it's in, in South Africa or, or on an offshore basis. Um, and, um, and then essentially, like I mentioned earlier, be guided by your financial model. So make sure that you have target yields that you want to achieve. So in residential, 
um, I wouldn't look at anything below 8 or 9 percent. Um, when it comes to commercial, you should be looking at around the 11 percent mark. So that should be your target yield. And to calculate that yield, you have to look at the, um, the rental income, place all of your expenses, and, and then calculate what your return is on an annual basis. And, um, and another principle that is really important is in, in as much as you can, try and use other people's money. So that is either uh, leverage the investment um, from, through a bank, through a financial institution, or if you want to get a hold of other investors' money, um, that's also a possibility, but you need to be bringing something to the party, so you need to be adding value. So I suggest don't just act as a broker, but really find a way of of fulfilling that um, that value proposition um, in terms of justifying your your role in the project. Well, Candice, I think that's great advice. Um, I think it's been wonderful chatting to you. Thank you. I think you've really get, given some sound insight, and uh, and I really think it's going to be great value to the readers of the real estate investor and uh, to new potential investors and also to those ex existing investors. Thank you. So thank I'd you. like to wish you well with the future and thank you for the opportunity. No, thank you. I really appreciate it.